What's going on, people? Welcome back to another Jays TV back again. It's Sunday evening. It's the match review show. And the game between Newcastle and Tottenham. It happened again, guys. Oh, yes, it did. Yes, absolutely. I think Tony's muted. Tony, you're muted, my guy. There yeah, you no, go. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just saying that you're muted, man. Um, yeah, so it happened again. <laughs> Certainly did. Not just that, we absolutely cooked them. Our pony towel, we actually marinated them, sauteed, cooked, marinated in the <laughs> oven. And that's exactly what we have done yet again to Tottenham. Last season, it's six. It should have been more than four, by the way. We should have absolutely slaughter them. But um, anyway, guys, if you like the video, like what you watch, make sure you smash that like, hit the subscribe button as well. Super chats are open. And... Also, you'd like to become a member, it's just 99p. Let's go through the comments as well. Big up to Mama Flossy. Hi to Mama. Um, massive Instagram grammar. She's absolutely fantastic. Hi to Mama. Hope you're well. Hi to Amy. Big up to Amy. Big up to Joe. Big, big fella fan. Wow, what a win for you, mate. What a win for you. Mm. Well done to you. Well done. And I think that um, Champions League place is going to be very, very interesting. And everyone say hi to Mama. So, so show some love to. Everyone in the chat. Right. We'll start with you, Pete. We was at the game yesterday. Obviously, I didn't see you, but 4-0. Four, mm -hmm. four and I did not expect that was sort of come at all whatsoever. No, absolutely we didn't. When we heard the lineup got announced, and we were all a bit concerned when you hear that Murphy was at right back. Um, you had Kraft at centre back and you had um Dan Byrne back at left back again. All people were saying, was it three centre backs? It did look like a bit of a 4-3-3, but do you know what, John? That is one of the best performances I've seen from us this season. We absolutely obliterated them apart. Uh, Cog Posta Coglu didn't have a uh, didn't have a clue he, what to do yesterday. There was no plan B from him. There was no any plan from him. And we absolutely annihilated them from start to finish. And we dealt with players very well, like Son. Madison, we dealt with players like them. The centre backs, Romero and Van der Veen, were absolutely all over the place, particularly Van der Veen when he slipped on his backside twice um, as well. Uh, Timo Werner, I don't know why he comes back to the Premier League after being such a flop uh, for Chelsea previously, and he looks even worse than what he previously was in the Premier League now. But do you know what? We were immense yesterday, John. Isak. The guy is just a goal machine right now. Gordon is just getting better and better every single game as well. Um, Bruno, the guy's just a magician in the, mid mid in the middle of midfield. Anderson, you've got to give a big out shout out to him. He was incredible yesterday. No wonder why some people are calling him the Johnny Maradona already. And, and Fabian Scherer at the back. The guy is just a beast at the back right now who dealt with everything in front, particularly with the likes of Song. Um, and his header yesterday was just incredible. The way he just rises above and just says, 4-0, that's the icing on the cake for us. It was just fantastic yesterday, John. And that's one of the best performances this, uh, this season from us. Yeah, totally agree with you, Pete. I mean, look, I thought he was up for it. I thought, listen... I mean, the first half an hour, I thought it was quite key. We had a couple of chances and just didn't really take them. And Werner had that chance that he placed him well over the bar. And that's the reason why Chelsea got shot of him. You know what I mean? For that very reason, he's just kind of finished his um, dinner, Tony. That is the problem. If Werner scored that goal, it would have been a different game altogether. Yeah, <clears throat> could have been. But before I just go on to the game, John, I just want to say, look... Um, a special mention today for the women. Look, the women have done absolutely brilliant today. A 10 0 win, yes, 10 0 against Huddersfield Town in was front there of over 7,000 well. fans, which was the biggest crowd they've had at Kingston Park all season, not just for the women's, but for the rugby as well. Um, so fantastic. Not only they won the league, they've got promoted to the championship. Um, well done to the lasses. We know the summer is going to be a total change. That team will be totally dismantled probably in the summer because they will have to upgrade on players for the championship because that is a huge step up now. And yes, there is going to have to. There probably will be a lot of tears because she's going to have. Bet he's going to have to 
get rid of some players because you're going to have to bring the better players in if you want to get out the championship to get the Super League. So, you know, there's going to be hard decisions, but that's football and we know what that's like. And that's always, that's the way it's got to be. Um, so, you know, obviously in the summer, there's going to be no room for sentiment. Um, so at the end of the day, but you know what? Let's enjoy what they've done today, this season. Two back-to-back promotions. Fantastic. You know, um, where the team was before the ownership came in was nowhere. Um, but now the ownership have produced a great team for us. And look, look at where we are now. And now on the way at the championship, Burnley even got beat to the off Stoke, which was a shock because I didn't think Burnley would have got beat off Stoke, but they did. Nobody can catch us now. And that is it. And what a way to end the last home game of the season. Not only winning 10-0, but winning the league in front of your fans and able to lift that trophy a lot as well. So, well done, you castinated women. Yeah, I was there. The day was incredible to be there oh, as yeah. well. I was there, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I bet they, I bet it was a great atmosphere. Pete, was it? It was. To fantastic. see 10 goals getting scored as well. The first goal came straight from kickoff. Yeah, 10 seconds, yeah. That was that was really quick. Um, congratulations to Newcastle lasses. So I'm getting promoted for the second eight straight, second year straight. And they're going to be playing Bristol City as well. So I'll be going to that game as well. So we should be on this, guys. Ashton Gates, hi. So can't wait for that. So Tony, tell us about um, give us a bit of a breakdown on yesterday's game, my man. Yeah, sorry I went into that one first, but I just no, thought that was fine. the... That's fine. You know, that's I thought fine. just because of today, nobody mentioned it, and I thought, oh, let's mention it, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, look, yesterday's game, I saw the lineup, and I was a bit confused by the lineup because I'm thinking, how are we setting up here? So, going to Sky, we'd set up 4 3 3 with, you know, Murphy right back, Crafton share as the centre backs, and Burn on the left. And I was sort of thinking, oh, no, because Brennan Johnson's going to have a field day here. But then I looked at the other side of it and I thought, I wonder if we're playing a back three and then Murphy and Elliot Anderson as wing backs or Barnes as a wing back. So, but, you know, it, look, Werner had chances to score. The guy, that guy is, I, I mean, Tottenham fans are probably glad it's only a loan deal and not a permanent because I tell you now, when he played for Chelsea in the Premier League, he was absolutely dross then. He's dross now for Spurs. Yes, he may be good in the Bundesliga, but in the Premier League, he, he's not a step up and he can't take that next step. Um, woeful chances he missed. He was offside for one of them as well um, and clearly offside. Um, <laughs> the guy's not a striker. And if Spurs sign him permanently in the summer, they're in trouble next season, I'll tell you now. But um, look... Madison should have had a booking in that first half. That was a dreadful foul on Anthony Gordon when he totally blocked him. Um, why the referee didn't even acknowledge giving him a yellow card is beyond me. Um, I was a bit disappointed with that because that was a certain yellow. And then when Byrne tripped him over, he had the audacity to stand at the ref, argue and shout, well, where's Byrne's yellow card? And I thought, hang on a minute, you should have had a yellow card. You've got no right to question the referee's integrity. Why he's not giving Dan Byrne a yellow card when you clearly should have had a yellow card for that foul. <laughs> so, you know, why on earth is he standing there remonstrating with the referee about Byrne's yellow card? And I thought, how dare you? How dare you, Madison? You shouldn't even be playing today, by the way, because he should have been sent off last week. Um, yeah, he should So, have look, been. I mean, we went ahead with... Alexander Isak. What a great goal that was, by the way. He took out Van de Ven. Um, oh. And then 95 seconds later, we score again, Anthony Gordon. And, you know, we just looked a totally, totally different team altogether. Um, and, you know, but I think Van de Ven lost a lot of confidence. His confidence was shot when he received that yellow card and his head was all over the place. Now, on TNT Sports, obviously you lads were at the match, so you wouldn't mm. know, but TNT Sports, Rio Ferdinand, they were all bigging him up. Oh, Van de Ven, he's a fast defender. He's great. Isak's going to have his work cut out today. Gordon's going to have his work cut out today. That He's a great defender. They bigged him up. And he's a failure because he, he was responsible for three of their goals. He wasn't, you know, and Pedro Porro was responsible as well. Um, 
So, look, it may have been an off day for him, but the way he lost his head after that yellow card, <laughs> you know, and then for the third goal, when he totally lost Isak altogether, and Isak was not offside because he was in his own half, so you can't be offside in your own half. Mm-hmm. And when he received that ball, Isak, and he was away, he left Van, de- Van de Ven for dust, you know. Um, shame Isak couldn't get a hat-trick, but uh, Cher gets up there and scores as well. And uh, look, we could have won that game 5 or 6. And I said on Thursday on your show, John, I said we would we would probably scrape a 2-1 win because I looked at this game as a difficult game. I did not expect us to go out there and win 4 nil. Now, I've been critical of Eddie Howe for the past for quite a while now. And, and, and it's not in a negative way. So, you know, before anybody shouts or says, oh, hang on a minute, why are you critical? Mm-hmm. There's a reason I'm being critical of Eddie Howe. Because it's the it's the team selections he's been making. And it's been having my and I've been scratching my head like, why why is a certain player playing? Why is he playing? Why is he playing? Yesterday, for me, Eddie Howe got it right. Now Moving forward, Eddie Howe. I know you don't watch. You probably don't watch these channels, or you might do because I'm sure you do when you start messing the team lineups. And but from now on, I want to see a front three of Gordon Wright, Isak Middle, and I want to see Barnes left. Agree as well Almiron on that one. Anywhere near that, I don't want to see Almiron anywhere near this team anymore. I do not want him on the right wing. If we are going to finish high in this table, see wherever we finish. If we want to finish in Europa League, play them three, game in, game out. Because I'll tell yeah, you now, you them three yesterday ripped Spurs apart. And Eddie Howe got it spot on with them three. Eddie Anderson, I thought, had a great game, by the way. Yeah. And then it was a nice touch when he took Bruno off to bring Joe White on just to stop Bruno getting another yellow card. Um, Romero was another one who should have probably have gone yesterday because he lost his head a bit. And especially at the final whistle, you might not have seen, but he went, he tried to go for Bruno at the end of the game. Um, maybe trying to get Bruno to retaliate again with yellow card. That guy is just, I, I'm glad we haven't got him in our defence because he's an absolute nightmare. And, you know, um, we've seen how many rash times he's been sent off for rash tackles he's done and things like that. He, the man's just an idiot. But for me, moving forward, I want to see them three up there. I don't mind Almiron coming on as an impact sub, maybe in the middle of the park, but I don't want him on the right wing anymore. I don't want to see him there. And in the summer, if we've got Europe, we need to keep Bruno. We need to keep Isak. We need to strengthen in that department. Now they're talking about Chiesa. Chiesa would be the perfect fit. And the reason why is because he can play anywhere across the front three, right wing, up front, left wing. You've got to play out with versatility there. So if, say, Barnes was out or Gordon was out, Kiesa can step straight in and do the job. And we want to see natural players there. We need to start getting rid of some players in the summer. But I tell you what, yesterday, we were absolutely brilliant yesterday. And we deserved that 4-0 win. And, you know, Postacoglu can look back in anger, but at the end of the day, it's his own problem. He needs to look at himself and his team. And it's a great double for North, you know, for North London at the moment, because obviously not all it well, it's been a great weekend all round, because not only have we hammered Spurs, Villa's gone to Arsenal and beat them and dented their title hopes. Liverpool's hopes have been dented now. Klopp could end up leaving uh, England with just one trophy this season because I can't see him overturn the three 0 lead against Atlanta. Um so look, there's a lot of positives this weekend, and in some ways, yes, I was hoping Arsenal might be filler because that might give us a chance to maybe sneak that fourth place. But you know what? I'm not bothered if we even get a Europe Europa League place. That's even better considering the season we have had. Yeah, that absolute fat. And you know what? I went and watched that game yesterday, and I tell you what, every player played fantastic. They were sure outstanding. Even Kraft played well. Yeah, steady. The midfield, Bruno, that pass to Isak, oh, magic. Oh, absolute one magic. One of the passes of the season. Fat, absolute fat. 36 even played well, yeah? And Anderson, absolutely outstanding. 
And look, fun three, Harvey B, my God. I mean, I'll tell you what, he worked his socks off that guy. Created, course done, Pedro Barrow, um, all sorts of problems as well. Um, Gordon, Andy Gordon, we've got to come on to him later. He is outstanding. A goal, two assists, my man on the match for me. And up front, Isaac, you know, he does what he does best. And that's to finish and scores on the back of the net. But, um, it's that... Amir Ronson... Sorry, John. It's... That front three yesterday, would you put it down? Would you put that as good as the G4 we had back in the day when Keegan was manager, when we had the best front four in the Premier League of Gillespie, Ginola, the G-Force on either side mm -hmm. with Giran Ferdinand in the middle? Do you think that's yep. the next best to them four? Absolutely. Yesterday, because yeah. I Absolutely. certainly do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go with it as well. I mean, you know, you've got to give a couple of games to those three. You've only done a one game. I mean, look, you got to do it, like, you know, on a consistently level as well. If you do it five or six times, it comes off, comes off. But you got to give it time, simple as that. But for me, that's the three I have. Barnes on the left, Gordon on the right, and up top. I'll just um, play um, up front Isak all day long. That's me front three, all day long. Do you know what I mean? Miggy, for me personally, I get rid of the summer. I'm sorry, Clover. His time's done way, for me. Fat. And Clover, if you're watching the show, get well soon. And no stress. I'll get you back on very, very soon. And you know that you're welcome to each other anytime. We do miss her tonight. I tell you what, she would have been fun. Um, and big up to her, like I said, to um Tune Collector as well. Do follow his Twitter account as well. You want to get up by retro shirts, then he is your guy. And also I met Charlene Talon yesterday and her daughter, Catelyn, as well. Big up to those two as well. Thank you very much for coming on me interview as well after the game. And um, big up to Alan P, of course. Did an interview with him yesterday before the match as well. Big up to Alan P. Um, Miggy should not, never be on the right, so you can understand that. Amy, I think he should be going at the end of the season. Let's be real. He doesn't go minute. straight back on the side at all when he's back fit. No. Definitely not. Definitely not. Eddie, you learned the lesson. That's your best for you. Stick to it. Yep. Simple as that. And to right, Tony, our front three must be the best in the Prem. Um, you know what? I like it when Gordon went on the left as well on the fist and proves how much Toon fans loved him. Trevor Fats. Gordon's tremendous yesterday. Absolutely floss. Long um 36 done the job on Madison. He was dead in the water yesterday. I mean, I, James I thought, Madison. Yeah, I thought yeah. long stuff was much better yesterday. And we want to see that just more now. Yeah. The thing is, I, I still uh, think he's gone. I still think he's gone. Well, come yeah. He was on 36. <laughs> but it was, a it was better from him yesterday. It was mm. a lot more better yesterday. Listen, I don't criticise any player. I'm not going to have a go at players, right? But the reason I call him 36 is because I just don't think he's good enough for my team. Do you know what I mean? He's Eddie's favourite. I know that. But at the end of the day, for me, you want to win titles, you want to win cups, then it needs to be sold on. It's as simple as that. Elliot Anderson could do a job just as well as 36 can. Um, Lloyd Kelly, rather take Matthew Kelly for me, not for me, mate. So we need bigger <laughs> no. than that as well. Amen. <laughs> Big up to Jops, by the way. Yes, you're on time as well. And it's Sunday. Big up to you. I hope you're well. And I hope your mental health is better as well, man. Big up to Kel, by the way. And I hope you're well. And I hope you enjoyed the match yesterday. Big up to Alan as well. Congratulations to our lasses, the back back promotions. Becky will have a very hard task more than Steve, who to let go and sign quality championship players. Absolutely. This is the thing. If we can get the quality players, that'd be amazing. Emma Toon. Ella Toon would be fantastic if getting in the league. I do love Ella Toon, by the way. She is amazing. She wouldn't and, drop the um, championship, John. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. But she's also a season ticket as well at Old Trafford. But, you know, um, it was nice uh, what Toon did on the shirts of the deaf people yesterday. People want to touch on that. I don't know if you saw it. Dan Byrne went like that, right? As he was a hammer. But, and these young lasses who are um, lovely Newcastle fans, you know, like the people for um, the deaf people, big up to um, the people who turned up yesterday. That was incredible. Yeah. incredible. That was incredible. <laughs> but I want to say, shame on you, match of the day. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see that. I mean, I had an early night yesterday. So, what was that all about, Pete? They weren't discussing, or they didn't show like um, the thing that they were doing for the deaf people and all of that. Even yeah. Paul was having an rant on TDR. 
and well said as well. And yeah, that is absolutely farcical from match of the day to do that. Not to mention second on the show as well, considering Man City were always going to thrash uh, Luton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Always. But yeah, but- I agree. I mean, they, um, they, they don't give us good press at all, don't they? They don't give us. They good never press mentioned all. the match of the day about the cheer, the one-off show we had on yesterday for the no. calls. They mentioned nothing, Pete. Not a thing, and I because I watched it like obviously I watched match of the day last night, and I and I was like, well, surely they're going to talk about you know this and it, not even mentioned, not even by the commentator, and I mean TNT Sports. Well, give them their due because obviously I see you guys at the match, so you wouldn't have known this. But TNT Sports actually spoke about it yesterday. They made a feature about it, like showing you Dan Byrne and Kieran Trippier going to see the, you know, the kids and that. Um, and and they explained about it. They, ex- you know, they explained about the shirts and everything. And obviously, when Newcastle scored, there's a sensor in the club underneath the club crest, so they get to know that that's a goal. Um. You know, and I, I think, and I think it's uh, it, it's brilliant this because I, I mentioned this on I think Friday night on my preview. I might know on the pre match yesterday. What Seller have done is absolutely fantastic because people who have got who are deaf have hearing loss or tinnitus. At the end of the day, this is brilliant, and I know that they're saying they're going to keep this going. And look, the thing is, I thought it was great from them to donate their sponsorship. For a charity sponsorship, which was absolutely fantastic, um, because it it gets the word out there as well. And you know, we've seen a lot of people be negative towards our club because of the ownership. But at the end of the day, seller are from Saudi Arabia, and do you know what? They are absolutely fantastic at what they do. And I tell you now, they are an excellent sponsor for our club. And they're just going to get things are going to get better. We've seen it with the drones. We're seeing it with a stack now, the seller fan zone that's going to be there. We've now seen this. What else has seller got up their sleeve? We don't know, but this is a thing. At the end of the day, <laughs> they are proven to be a fantastic sponsorship, and that's what you call a proper sponsorship. Now, I tell you now, if that was Man City who done that yesterday, or a Liverpool, or an Arsenal, or a Man United, match of the day would have spoke about that without a doubt. But because it's Newcastle United, the BBC did not get did not care one bit. And it was even on the ITV main news on Friday night about about what we were doing about the deaf people, you know, and um, you know, for the hard of hearing and that. And they even mentioned on ITV national news, but they couldn't mention it on Match of the Day last night. So shame on you, BBC. Shame on you, everybody at Match of the Day disgraceful fat absolute fat and you know what it is right any super chat i'm gonna get i'm gonna think about doing it any super chat i'm gonna get i'm gonna donate that straight to the ohid so i need to find out what it's all about and also how to send the money as well so if you're watching guys any super chats is going straight to them and i will find out how to send on the money so just to let you know right now, but you're right, guys. It's just a disgrace. It's like saying that Buddha did a pass, and um, not Buddha, it was um, Kukukata did a pass straight to um, it was at um, Antonio, right? And that got bigged up, that big that got bigged up and bigged up by bigged up, right? Bruno G did a pass yesterday. Let's talk about that. He did a pass yesterday straight to Isak. The third goal was absolutely majestic, pass of the season for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's yeah. the way Isak runs from his own half just to get to that ball and does the rest, which is put the ball in the back of the net. And this guy, as I've said it, is a goal machine right now. 17 goals in the Premier League, 21 in all competitions. There is still time for Isak to reach 20 goals plus this season, and it well can truly happen. Fat, absolute fat. Let's go for the comments. Yeah, and I mean. another oh. thing, it wouldn't surprise me as well. It wouldn't surprise me if we give Isak number nine next season. Not, not, no disrespect to Callum Wilson, but I think Callum Wilson 
His time has now done at Newcastle because of the injury record. Yes, Isak has had the odd injuries, but Isak, to me, played like a number nine as played at this football club yesterday. And I wouldn't be surprised if we handed Isak number nine next season. Yeah, absolutely. I, Go on, Tony. I don't, I, I don't think Callum Wilson will be here next season because I'm not... Be, well, we've seen reports saying he's not happy at Newcastle now since he got turned down for Atletico Madrid. Um, they reckon he's... Hit, after that, he just wasn't happy, apparently. And look, if you look at that Forest game before he got that injury, if I, if I look at him on the pitch, he didn't look interested that day, if he I'm honest. He didn't. He he didn't badly. He, he, his body language didn't look right that day. And I just thought, Callum, do you really want to be here? Because the way I'm looking at it, it looks like he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be on this pitch. And do you know what? No disrespect to Callum Wilson. I don't think you'll get £25 million for him in the summer because he's injury prone. Should we have cut our losses in January and sold them on for twenty million? Because to be honest with you, have we missed up? No. Um. So look, we could have cashed in on them in January, but we haven't. I think hmm. if we get ten to fifteen million from him in the summer, you let him go. Simple as, and you bring another striker in. Now they're talking about Sesco. Now he's going to cost about forty-five million quid release clause. But again, someone like Sesco, he's younger, and you've got to, you know. So you're going to have two young strikers in Isak and uh, Sesco, which is absolutely fantastic. And also the fact is, um, whoever else we bring in, I know people are seeing FFP and all this, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get rid of a few fringe players that we can get a bit of money for. The likes of Almiron, the likes of Longstaff. Leeds are prepared to pay £15 million for Longstaff. Take them. Just get rid and help build your FFP up. Get some sponsorship in in the summer as well, and who knows? We won't have to sell a big player, and we will start making the money and tripling that money. Oh, you totally hundred percent, man, hundred percent. There's ways of selling players without right? saying your bigger names, and I hope Eddie is smart enough, and I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. I mean, for me yeah. personally, I get Ivan. I get Ivan. I'll be happy getting Ivan. Oh, people spot out. Is someone where's he gone? Yeah, I think he's frozen, so he'll be back in a minute as well. So he'll be back in a minute. That was a quick fresh. Yeah, that who was... would you get, uh, John? Yeah, no, what was that, Tony? Sorry? What did you say, John? Who would you I'll, go I'll for, say, Ivan Tony? I, 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 I will go Ivan Tony and Callum Wilson's part of the deal. I wouldn't take Tony back, though, John. I wouldn't I want to. Brentford will demand. He scores, score, 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 scores, and we need a bit of pace. The fact is, fun. Tony would want regular games, though. John, and the thing is, Ivan Tony is, if you look at the when he come back for Brentford, that changed my mind straight away that I wouldn't want him. When he sat there after being out for all that time through the betting scandal and Brentford were there backing him and all he could sit there and say was, oh, I'd love to be in a team that's playing in the Champions League. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Whoa, hmm. you've just come back and you're sitting there on a boat going to a team that's in the Champions League. But this club's looked after you and treat you right. And that's that's the thanks you give them. I don't want him at Newcastle. I don't think he's got the right attitude anyway. And I, to be honest with you, I don't even think he'd come back here because he, he seems to have an agenda against us when he scores. Mm. Well, that's not good then. That ain't good. That ain't good. I'll go for Sesco and then get Sesco in. I think he's a, he looks a good player. Six foot yeah. five years. Great player. Um, let's go for some and half the price of Ivan Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true. Um, our last five games, our form was only better by City, and you have noticed that how out Shouter seem to be very quiet. I think they must have gone to Caribbean drinking some rum. That's where Eddie, Eddie out hears us off, as far as I know. <laughs> so true, they never mentioned a thing. That watching the game back, I thought TNT were going to ask for age verification. The amount of time Spurs were all fours. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Brian>. Fat bosh. <laughs> yeah, they man. didn't mention the mention deaf kids and new equipment for them to enjoy the experience. Kel, you know what? You know our feelings about BBC. Absolutely disgraceful. Disgraceful. Big up to Adam, by the way. Adam, um, guys, you want to get retro shirts? Adam is your guy. Follow him on Twitter. At the tune underscore Coletta, go to his retro shirts, check it out, and you never know, it might do you a good deal because I'll be going there very soon, hopefully. 
Grandstand's coming back on the football focus when Alice Scott is axed. That, that's interesting. Um, they should put their shirts in club shops so deaf people can buy them at lower cost. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's just typical of match of the deal. Get in the nice sky sports and rubbish. As in <laughs> Alan. Alan does not pull any punches at all whatsoever. Big up Alan. Did you see the little girl jump up and do the turn to our man with a big smile on the face? Oh, yes. That, that, that is great. amazing. Absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean? Nearly made just cried, by the way, to be fair. Um, must have been half a million people cried watching how beautiful it happened. Such a love bunch of minutes during the, sh- the game and then on social media after. Shame BBC can't do the same thing with Newcastle United. Absolutely shameless. I've been to Saudi. Salah are absolutely fantastic. I've never been to Saudi, but I'd love to go there. Hopefully, if they go back to a pre-season friendly, I should be there as well. Um, BB Shameless. Yes, Amy, you're correct. Yeah. Let's go on to... Um, anyone else have a slight giggle at the Arsenal-Liverpool results? Yeah, I mean, yeah, not well, good, yeah, Klopp's lost two games that Europa League, and they, they're doing their way to try and uh, forfeit the... Of, uh, throw away the title. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And Arsenal, yeah, this is the it's always this point of the season where Arsenal just seem to throw it right out the window. Lee Gunner is absolutely hopping mad. Do check out Lee Gunner's um podcast, yeah. He is not a happy bunny. And also as well, Sir Matty Savaguna, he is furious. And Jez, also history and more, check out his channel as well. I tell you something, man, they will not be happy. I'll be watching them later. Mm. I don't think we've seen Callum again. Um, he might I'm come sorry. back, but he certainly doesn't walk straight in the start lineup. No way. Can't see it. Can't see it. This guy. That's a question. Just... That's a question for you, Stu. Now, I was thinking yesterday after this, after the match, after we, we've done so well in obviously delivering mentals back now. For me, now, use me be different to what I'm thinking, yeah? When Trippier's fit, he doesn't come back into the team straight away. He sits on the bench and waits his turn, as far as Ooh. I'm concerned, because. I, I think we've had, we've done okay without them, and Anthony Gordon's quite capable of taking set pieces. Not a I bad agree. shout, in a way. Mm-hmm. I and I think Dan Burns done well to step up as a leadership in the captain mm-hmm. as well. Because mm. he's better at centre back than he is at left back. That's why he's playing his proper position. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's competition for places for a reason. If you look at Tottenham's last game, do you reckon you can catch him? Probably not, Ian. Probably not. We're 10 I points think... behind them. They would need to slip up at least a few games and we'd have to get the points. Yeah. we got to go on a mad run. we got to go to Old Trafford as well. Yeah, that won't be easy. But they're, they're all winnable win games, Man John. I think Man United, to me, is winnable. I'm sorry. Yesterday, Man United were absolutely... Shh, absolute dross yesterday. The only Born thing that's... Robbed. Yeah, the only thing that saved Man United's skin was VAR. I'm sorry, that is not a penalty. It's a deflection off a player. And it, uh, how is that classed as intentional? Well, you know who was on VAR, though, don't you? Jared it Jared Gillett. Gillett. <laughs> he's an Aussie Red. He's an Aussie Red. Aussie Red. <laughs> I'm sorry, you cannot give a handball for a deflection. No, it's not can't. intentional. It's just a bit. Un- it's unfortunate that. Hmm. Be interesting but, to see what Dermot Gallagher says on Ref Watch tomorrow. Yeah, I agree, guys. And I, I thought agree. Bournemouth were miles the better team. Hundred mm. percent. Mm. Even Zelanke. So Clive, well. Justin Clive had Dallard in his back pocket, or he had a on toast. Do you know what it is, right? Do you know what it is, right? I mean, watching Clive is like watching Patrick Clive yesterday. He was balling. Yesterday he was balling. It's like it's you guys just call it Patrick Clive playing because Patrick Clive was good at this day, you know, for Barcelona. And it's like watching him. Do you know what I mean? And I tell you what, United were absolutely poor. That's an injury Joe Willock has the season. Would you sell him in the summer? I'll give him one more season, Alan. I'll give him one he more season. He needs to get fit. He needs to get yeah. fit. But the fact is, when Willock comes back fit, that's another guy who doesn't walk straight back in the team for me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Spurs always collapse in the season. And chat to Ian there. I will have Tony on, on a fee. I don't think both will let him go on a fee. Anybody can say when... Callum Wilson's not a top striker, he's a belter. The yeah. order is right, the guy's checked out. He's absolutely he's checked out. Not he's injured, he's checked out. Tony Tonali would be he's, top he, Wilson's training. been a great servant, but he's just glass he's just glass made. And you said, Tony, mm. that 
that Forest game, he well, I was there as well. He just he did not look himself. He did not look interested. I just I, I looked at him that night and I just thought he just does not look like he's interested. It's like he didn't want to be there on that pitch. Um, and I think there was one part where the ball came to him or something, he didn't get near and he just moaned. And I just thought, do you know what? Take him off. But then he got the injury. So, you know, but um, look, Callum Wilson is a very good Premier League striker. He's a goal scorer. We know he is. We know what he's capable of. The problem is you can't keep him fit. That is the problem. And I did call it right. And I said, when he came back from that latest injury, I says, he'll be back for two games. And then he'll be injured. And people say, oh, no, no, you're just taking the piss now. And I, excuse my language. And I said, no, 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 I'm not taking the pee. I'm not taking the mick. I'm, I'm calling it as it is. He'll have two games and he'll be injured. Plays two games. What happens? Injury, and he's out for the most of the season now. So I rest my case. I got it right again. But look, the thing is, he just did not look interested that night. And as far as I'm concerned, you've got to start shifting these players on, you know. Um, and if somebody like Fulham or whatever come into someone and said, look, there's 15 million. We'll take Callum Wilson off your hands. Thank you very much, Fulham. Off you go. Go to Craven Cottage. And uh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. And we'll get a younger striker in, somebody who can stay fit longer. I think Isak, yes, we know he's had his injury problems, but maybe they're over. And hopefully next season we'll see a stronger Isak. You know, I saw a post today on Twitter, which somebody reposted from a journalist back in Spain, who said that only Newcastle would be the only team who would go and buy Isak because he had a wretched injury record when he was associated with that. Um, he says they'll not get much out of him. Well, I hope that guy's eating these words now because I'll tell you what, I hope he regrets ever posting that. I totally agree. I totally agree. We take chances and I tell you what, he's got it right. Maybe the Premier League is the place for Isaac. And I tell you what, I've said that last season. Well, obviously, we told him at Tyneside Life. I said, go and get Isaac. Go and get him. Two days later, he came. So there you go. Um, let's go on to the first goal. All right? I mean, the first goal scored, I mean... Good work from Anthony Gordon, Pete, and Fred Isak. And then Isak um, cut inside Van der Ven. He had a nightmare. I think getting but he, him getting but killed him. But he got him dumped on his backside and he finished it smartly, Isak. What a finish. Absolutely. Uh, one of the best things was the way how uh, uh, Anthony Gordon held up the ball uh, for the goal and the way he fed through Isak and he says, I'll do the rest and I'll slot it in the ball in the back of the net. Exactly what he did that. I think that team Eddie put out um, play for the shirt and fans. I think the players who, who come back would find it hard to get into that team. Trevor, I'm with you, my guy. I'm with you. And um, as to Ivan Ferguson, Allen, that won't happen. That will not happen because if he's going to leave Brighton, he'll go to Chelsea or United. Jealous best a man could get. I tell you what, he must have just used and blazed as a future career because I tell you what, being the VRR ref ain't for him. Tottenham have Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Arsenal last six games. Ooh, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Man, you got two pen decisions at FM Disgrace. Fat. And we're, I'd rather sign Wall Tony on screen there, Tony. Andrew, uh, Tony likes you, Andrew DB. He likes you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let's go into the second goal. I mean, we've got a goal. I mean, look, as I was just um, singing Isaac's name, right? I looked around. Andy Gordon was through, right? Again, took on Van der Ven, beat this man, and he finished it smartly again. Two goals in two minutes, Tony. Andy De Gordon, what a signing he's been for us. Well, I, you know, and I saw a lot of people doubt this when he signed, and i have done a video at the time when, when we were on the verge of signing him, and I said, look, I did say back at the time, this guy is a rough diamond and needs smoothing out, and I was absolutely spot on about that. And I said, look, I can see why people have got doubts, but I think this lad could come really good. Let him have the rest of the season, give him next season, and we'll see a different player. And I said, you know, if he's not, then I, I, I'll take it back. But what we have seen is, we have seen a different player this season because he's one. He's got to be the best left winger, English left winger in the Premier League. He's better than Rashford, in my opinion. Um, because if you look at Rashford, 
At the moment for Man United, he does not look interested. He fades in and out of games. Anthony Gordon is consistent and you've got to have consistency. And Anthony Gordon could be the difference to England winning the Euros this season, in this, this summer, sorry, coming up in a few months' time because not only can he play left wing, he can play right wing as well. So you've got somebody who can play left and right. Obviously, England's going to pick Saka on the right wing. But I'll tell you now, if Gordon does not go to the Euros, then there's something seriously wrong with Gareth Southgate mm. because he's either Euros. blind, he's either blind, and he thinks Rashford's the best player since sliced Rashford bread. Is overrated. He is overrated. He's awful. So I want to see Anthony Gordon on that plane for Germany, and if Gareth Southgate has got an ounce of sense in his brain somewhere, if he can find a brain cell that he can maybe dig out from the back of his head and say, oh yeah, Anthony Gordon's got to be in that team, then I hope he does the right thing and puts him in because Anthony Gordon's been fantastic this season. You know, not only the goals, but the assists as well. He's been involved in 18 um, goal contributions this season. That's 10 goals and 8 assists, you know, for a winger. Um, He's created 12 big chances as well throughout the season. You know, his accuracy is 83% per game, which is, again... It, it, it's just absolutely fantastic. His defending's good as well. He re, his ball recoveries per game, 3.4 every game. So, you know, and he's had no errors that's led to any goals or shots or even committed any penalties. Um, You know, yes, he's had eight yellows and he's had a yellow to red and one red card. But you know what? The guy has been absolutely outstanding this season. Um, And look, he's got to be in that England squad at the end of the season. Um. Because I'll tell you now, the way he's playing, and it, and I'm saying, and I think this, it, it, I'll, I'll say this in a good way, I could see other teams starting to stand up and look at Anthony Gordon and think, wow, what have we missed out on here? You know, um, I'm glad we got him ahead of Chelsea because I think if he got to Chelsea, he would have been a ruined player with Chelsea, I'm honestly, if I'm honest with that. Um, so I think getting him at Newcastle was probably the right thing to do. And look, Everton fans all said he was a championship player. He's not good enough. Well, I bet they're sitting there thinking now, wow, you know, we got a bargain there. We got a bargain there, um, you know, um, at 45 million quid. Um, Because I'll tell you now, he's worth a lot more than 45 million pound now. His stock's rising. Mm -hmm. And rightly so on sofa score, he was given Um, the match yesterday at 9.2. And I'll just read his stats from yesterday. 90 minutes played, one goal. Two assists, expected XG was 0.62, so he's exceeded that. He's exceeded the assists. He had one shot on target, none off target, one shot blocked. Two out of four dribble attempts were successful. He missed one big chance. He had 45 touches. 11 out of 13 passes were accurate, 85%. Eight key passes he made. Seven out of 18 crosses accurate. One out of one long ball accurate. He created one big chance. He won five out of nine ground duels. He didn't win his aerial duels. He lost possession 17 times. He committed one foul. He was fouled twice. Made two interceptions, one tackle, and he dribbled past once. What an outstanding player. Yep, and there's also, that's 10 at Premier League goals from this season. He's into double figures. And also, he has scored against all of the big six this season. Man City, Liverpool. Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United, Spurs. Fat, absolute fat. What a fantastic sign he's been. He really has been fantastic. On off the pitch and on it as well. Um, just off topic quickly, if you're going to talk about um individual players as well. Jules Enrique has mentioned an Isaac injury prone and Sociedad and his BS that twat thinks he's Liverpool legend and not even a Newcastle one. Enrique. Do you think he needs to keep think... his mouth shut because we ain't want to sell him any time soon. Do you think he said it? Do you think he's saying that um, so Liverpool can get him? I don't know. Well, Liverpool need a manager first of all next season. They ain't got one yet, have they? <laughs> They've got a sporting director coming in, Richard Hughes, but they haven't got a manager yet. Yeah. Well, there's talks of the sport. Is it the sport Lisbon manager? Yep. Yeah, but again, is it true? Nobody knows. It won't be our long so. And you know what? If they don't get ammo in, then they're gonna to have to go back to the drawing board. I mean, they don't they don't want to take over from Jurgen Klopp. 
because what Jürgen has done is unbelievable, man. He's yes, and I know he's um, you know he's got um arrogant, but he's a damn good manager. Whoever takes over Jürgen I mean, has got a difficult job as long as you don't come to us for Eddie Howe. And um, let's go on to the next one. Um, not just on the pitch, Tony Gordon's class off it. He's really taken to the club, the city, and the Geordies. He's turned as a very good pro. And you know what, Andrew? You are so right. Okay, in two years' time, we're going to have the best squad in Europe. Oh, Gary, don't stretch too far on it. I love your optimism, though. No? Not wrong with that. England will not win out against Deadgate. And Kel is absolutely spot on because we won't win yeah. out with this absolute boring, paint drying manager in charge of our managing our uh, country uh, club. No chance we will win. The last international man here in the summer. Oh, if he goes to Man U, I will, I will have a hysterical laughing fit if he goes. In. Don't tell that to United stand. Because I tell you what, they would be absolutely furious. I'm well, you. apparently, Sir Jim Radcliffe thinks he's magnificent. Yeah. Oh, I tell you I've what, I've got him and Potter on the shortlist. Yep. Well, uh, hey. fair enough. It's... Good luck to that. Better off sticking with Everton. And what's happening with this there. Dan Ashworth? He's still gardening. Apparently, Pete. they're still he's... talking. Oh, apparently it sounds like Manu doesn't want to pay the twenty odd million, and we're playing <laughs> hardball with them. <laughs> Exactly. It's either you pay us the money we've asked for, or it doesn't happen. Full stop. And Jim Rackett thinks we're words, being silly. In other we're words, not being silly. Because a river, a river me go. That means it's called. Environment. Tell you what's called, John and Pete. It's called karma, and it's called what goes around comes around. So Manchester United. Do you remember when we were in a relegation scrap? And we asked for Jesse Lingard on loan. And you yep. said, oh, yes, we can have him on loan, but you pay £5 million now. And then oh, if you still, oh, you pay a £12 million survival bonus. So we want £17 million for a player to out a contract in the summer. Well, no, that's not happening. So we're not doing it. And we didn't do it. And then and then when we did ring up for him, apparently on the last day of the, se- on the, last day of the transfer window, they ignored the phone from Newcastle and West Ham. So... You know, short memories there, Jim Ratcliffe. Obviously, you weren't at the club then, but if you go back and look at the facts, then you'll see why we are playing hardball with Man United. And we do the same for anybody who comes. Even if Man United wanted any how, we'd slap a big price on him for you. So there you go. Exactly. Um, no business with Man United. I must be kissed, Tony. I must be kissed. You know what? These boards, right? And Jim Ratcliffe, right? Adam Mid has come in, right? Saying he wants to have the biggest stadium down the centre of London, right? And he wants, and he wants taxpayers' paper. money. Get in the bin. <laughs> Get in the sun bin. I tell you exactly. No exactly. chance that is going to happen. What a bunch of poor chop that guy is. Seriously. He looks like somebody who just sleeps in his car. The state of him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> oh no! Hey, <laughs> if you look at the state of him, looks like he sleeps in his car and he's closed. <laughs> Terrible, oh man. no! My God, oh. man! Get in there. Tell that guy to get in the bin. Sorry, Macy, if you're watching. Um, he's a ain't leaving. Just like how he is. Does be hitting. It's crying. People keep linking our players to other clubs. Gary, he's going nowhere, miss. He's going nowhere. Um, so shout out, boy, got relegated, didn't he? And thanks for watching, Amy. Love you lots as always. Make sure I'm gonna get you on me sure soon, Amy. Trust me on that. And, um, you know what? There's two people I'm not gonna mention their names, can't do a thing about it. And you take Amy, have a good night as well. And, um, he was in the smugglers here. Then let's talk about um, the fourth goal. <laughs> I mean, Fabian Shah, what a player he is, that guy, 32 years to age, right? He's still doing it, right. Great call from Gordon, right on Shea's head. That guy leapt like a salmon. Tony, take it away, man. What a performance oh, yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Shea's been brilliant, hasn't he? Um, mm-hmm. You know, and you just think, how much longer can we keep Shea? That's a thing. Um, mm. How much can he? How much has he got the legs to stay and play? But look, when nobody's out with a ball, he can ping a ball about the park, which is fantastic for a centre half. Um, oh, look, honestly, but the goal he scored yesterday was typical of Cher getting up, 
header it, you know. Um, but it's not just his heading ability. He can score screamers as well. We've seen it many a time. Burnley, Nottingham Forest, you know. So we know he can score the screamers, Paris Saint-Germain. Um, yeah, but that guy's been a rock. He's been absolutely brilliant for us. And I tell you now, if we'd lost him to an injury, we would notice that straight away in defence. We would notice that. Um, but no, I thought he was absolutely terrific again yesterday. Um, had another great game for us. Does his defensive duties as well as he always does. Um, you know, I mean, look, Dan Byrne, yes, playing alongside him, Dan Byrne's captain as well. But I tell you what, Cher is definitely captain material because, you know, he's like a leader. Um, I don't think we've got one leader, like just one captain on that pitch. We've got 10 captains on the outfield, you know, because um, they're all captains in their, out right, in their own right. But uh, look, Cher was fantastic yesterday. Got everywhere. Um, done his defensive duties well. Um, you know, got one goal. Made five clearances, blocked two shots, four interceptions, two tackles. You know, fantastic from him. Um, he only lost possession seven times in the whole game. Mm. That just shows you how immense he is. Uh, you know, um, but the guy, the guy is brilliant. And uh, I don't know why he doesn't play more for Switzerland. Um, they must have a centre back pair, pairing where Shaw can't get past them. But uh, you know. I'm not sure if Switzerland's at the Euros this year, but if they are, they are. Uh, they are. Cher, I think Cher needs to be playing for them because I tell you now, he could hurt a few teams. Mm -hmm. I agree. I tell you what, if he was a young lad, he was like 27, 26, 25. And um, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is, right? I mean, um, I tell you what, that guy would be a hell of a lot of money because that guy defends properly. He spent Deputivo La Coronia, <laughs> didn't quite do it there, hurt Berlin. He was all right, but in Newcastle, found his place. Three million quid. This guy, Pete, it's got to be the best, one of the best signings in Newcastle's history. Three mil? Absolutely. Consider where we bought him from. Did well under Rafa. He was Bruce under Bruce. And what does Eddie Howe do? Gets him the best that he has been when we first uh, signed him. He's just cracking it. It's 32 years of age as well. He's still going. Still Still going. He's Absolutely. Worth, I mean, let's just say our former owner, I don't like mention the man's name because I call him Tyrant because that's what he was. Now, him, the or the fat cocky, whatever you want to call him, but at the end of the day, at least we can say that's one transfer he got right because, you know, he, he had a relegation clause in his contract where if they got relegated, he left for that three and a half million quid and we snapped him up. And, you know, that was the best bit of business we did. Um, you know, because he's got to be one of the top defenders, if not in the Premier League, if around Europe as well, um, you know. But, yeah, that was one transfer we got right. Yes, he got bruised. Um, so far, score of currently got him rated at £7 million. Pound. So and that just shows you how much he's worth to us. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You know, I mean, best piece of business ever in my book, I'm telling you. And how much you'd be worth today. Do you think we should have done better with corners? 20 corners, one goal. We could have done, but it's just um, headed just wide and um, been unlucky, Gary. But Well, it was in a way, but we didn't have our original corner kick taker, which is Trippier, who's still out injured. Fact. And the fact uh, is... We did. I know we had a lot of calls, but we did try to do something from the corners as well. Yes, we had the, maybe a dollar, but we tried to do, try to create something from them, which I thought yeah. we did. Yeah, it's different as well. I mean, put on the money, but uh, none of this passes to the first man like as well, which is different. So you know what? I think it's brilliant. Great corners and Gordon, by the way. Edit man of the match, you'd be like a young Joe Linton. That's my Alan as well. Let's talk a bit about Tottenham as well before we go for the player ratings. A bit of Tottenham. Um, I thought for me, I thought Van der Ben, where he got that yellow card, did him. Absolutely done him. I mean, he did all he was scared of getting sent off. That's why you can get anyone near Isak or Gordon. I mean, we did just run rings around him. And the, and could have been a lot more goals, Tony. It had to be for late late defend late last defending Paul a couple of times. 
also uh, Romero. Yeah, I mean, look, it could have been four, five, six yet again. They were poor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you Udogi got the, uh, you know, he got a he got a tackling as well. Um, he did. But uh, but yeah, look. I mean, if Gordon took that shot first time, he probably hits the target and it probably goes in. But I think you give Van der Ven that little bit extra time. Van der Ven, for me, after he got that yellow card, because he was really, really incensed about the yellow card he got. Um, and okay, yeah, it may have been a soft card, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The referees gave it. Um, but he just seemed to lose his head. Um, and we ran rings around him. Um, as I say... It's the same old cliche that you know, uh, the 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 broadcasters like to big one of these players up and make some sound like oh the world class player and all this, and then he he falls flat on his backside, and and looks mediocre, you know, and that's yeah. exactly what happened to Van der Ven yesterday. He had the big build up, and then he was dropped like a sack of spuds. Um, <laughs> spuds as in well Spurs anyway are spuds aren't they? So look, um. The sports were sent packing, but uh, mm. no, I thought I thought he was he, he was responsible for their goals as well as Pedro Porro as well, because um, Porro was poor as well. Let's be honest. Um, but the whole team I don't think any of the Spurs, the, the whole team for Spurs were absolutely abysmal yesterday. I don't think anyone had an they outstanding were. game. At all. I yeah. tell you who did well for the money came on, and he sort of made a difference. And I and I'm sort I'm sort of thinking, well, you know. Um, I'm glad they brought him on late, but I thought one player who did make a huge difference to Spurs when he came on um, was Hybeg. Yeah, mm. he seemed to put it. He seemed to try for you know what I mean. At least he tried more than what the rest of them did. Um, yeah. But other than that, although I wouldn't want Hybeg anywhere near Newcastle, by the way. Um, but yeah, look, at the end of the day, Spurs weren't that great. Um, they probably thought they could turn up and beat us, and you know, um, but it didn't happen. And we should have won about six or seven nil. If we'd won six or seven nil, it wouldn't have been out of place. And um, one thing Ali McCoy said on the commentary yesterday as well, he said, um, I hope John Carver and Steve Clark are watching this game. He says, because if you are, he says, please, please, for the sake of Scotland, for the Euros. Get Harvey Barnes in that squad for the summer. He says, "Don't let England get him. You take him instead." What do you think mm. about that, John? Well, he's English. I think he's a Burnley lad. I, I, mean, I think Gav Southgate should give him a chance, but he won't because I tell you now, if he goes to Scotland and he does it for them, there's got to be questions to answer. Because I tell you what, I mean, I think Harvey will play for England over Scotland, but uh, my advice, Harvey. I'll wait until my new manager comes in. You'll get your chance, mate. What about you, Pete? Should be playing for England. I think he deserves an England chance as well. I think Harvey Barnes is a goal-scoring winger. Mm-hmm. That's why we got him in. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Five we'll we'll of the comments as well, and then we go for the, the... And also, so I'll get your question on Pete as well. I'd Elliot as man of the match. Um, that should have been sent off. Man to man mark and brilliant play. Spurs were small bad and our fun three foot into the sword. Yep, indeed. indeed. Spurs had their tactics as well and how we played making them look bad. True. For Tottenham, who are their rubbish? That's Alan and um Anderson's on some heroes to post on the shirt. He may not get their assist of goals, but my god, you can you get um you can guarantee about 110 percent effort every time fat. I think first 20, we looked in a little bit of trouble. After that, it's so strong of a way. It was incredible. That's some jobs. Or oh, Ali McCoy's commentary did me nothing. Aston Kell. Fair enough. Right. Um, people are going to play with it. It's your take. I'm going to say something about Poster Cagalu. Uh, and he said that in his press conference after the game, he said that we didn't really try. And I think straight away, that ain't good. You don't go out in the press conference and say those. We didn't, we didn't really try. We should be getting his team up for a game, and he certainly mm-hmm. didn't. He didn't even watch our 6 1 defeat to them last season, apparently. That's what he said. That's what he said, apparently. And I tell you what, like, I mean, you got to learn from last season, and obviously they didn't. And the thing is, as well, I watched them this um, Tottenham channel, right? And it's a brilliant channel, and they're so spot on. 
they said that the players couldn't cope with the, fa the fans. I told you, you need to keep the fans quiet in the first 20 minutes, half an hour, and do you, you do know that. where you keep St. James's Park quiet? That's what that's what they said. And you know what? Even Holman Son, I mean, the thing is, though, talk about being ruthless, right? And took off Son. I, mean, I thought that was a. I was laughing at that when that when that he, happened. I thought, "What the hell is he doing?" You just sound like a, a poster caller. Just you just thought that uh, as soon as we got there, that a uh, game was done and dusted. So I thought, "Ah, well, we've got the game, so I'll just sing him off." But what I noticed about Son in the game yesterday, how deep he was playing. Yeah, wrong position as well. He, was, he should he be played, off. He's, he was played so deep in the side for them. Hmm. I totally agree. I'm frozen, guys. So do I take over Tony or Pete, one of you two? I'll be yeah, back. yeah, that's talk fine, about, John. I'm yeah. about Son as well, but you know what? I think he's a decent player, but I think he's played in the wrong position. But hey, ho. I just refresh the yeah. channel. Okay, John. No worries. I mean, um, I mean, yes, yeah, Son, Son, Pete, he, he just wasn't at the races yesterday. He was pretty poor for them, which I'm glad he had an off day because, look, we know Son's an excellent striker on his day. Um, and he can hurt you. Um, obviously, they had no Richarlison yesterday. Um, but I thought yesterday we just put in that extra bit. I mean, Poster Coglu said before the game on TV, um, again, because you were at the game, so you wouldn't have heard it. He said, I've said to the players, look, we need to be focused because they're going to play an intense game. He says, the crowd's going to be with them. He says, they're going to be against us. So we need to make sure that we try and quieten the crowd down and um, try and stop their press as well in intensity, um, which they didn't stop. And it was only a matter of time before we scored. And then once we got the first goal, it was just about, right, OK, let's go on and try and grab a second. I was kind of hoping we might have got a third before half time, but, you know, didn't have long to wait till after the break, did we, for a third goal? No, there was a lot of fans, Spurs fans saying that the Richarlison was a big miss for them yesterday. Well, he might have been, but look at us. Who have we got out still out injured? We've nearly got a, a lot of pretty much nearly a full start and 11 out with injuries. There's no Pulp, there's no Trippier at the moment, there's no Botman. We know Tino had just come back. There was doubts over Hall, but he was fine to play, but he only made the bench. There's no Tonali because he's still saving a suspension. We're still without Joe Linton um, at the moment. Um, yes, we've got some of the players that are still injured. We've got the likes of Matty Target injured, who, let's face it, I think he's finished for the season because now I've seen pictures of him in a, in a protective boot now. Yeah, because I sent that to you yesterday, I think, Pete. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, look at these in there, Mr. Richarlison. And we had still a nearly pretty much full starting 11 still out injured. And Tottenham, Tottenham fans are shouting their mouths off saying, oh, look, um, we got beat off the reserves for Newcastle United because, um, you know, um, how if we can get beat off a reserve team, then what's the hope for the rest of the season? And say, sorry, there's not a reserve team. There's first team players there. You got beaten by quality, quality players, quality yeah, of Gordon, Gordon, quality Isak, of Isak, quality Bond. of Barnes. Bruno... Yeah, absolutely. Share. Share. Yeah. Yeah. Totally Anderson, agree. who put a graft in. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I agree with everything you say there. And you know what it is, right? We've got half the players out as well. You've got players like Paul, Trippier, Jordan, and Tenali, Wilson. Um, it was a target as well. Lascelles, Botman. That's eight players out. Willock, it's nine. Nine players out. Yep. Tonali's you know out. I mean? Yeah. You, you said Tonali. You said Tonali. No, he um, said yep. Tonali. Willick, to me, hasn't looked fit since he, he came back. Yeah. Tell you That's what. That's the thing. Go on. Dubravka got a weaver one yesterday when he spilt that shot, didn't he? He did. Yeah. But what I liked about that, he quickly got, came out quickly to get that ball. Yeah. And that's what would be critical of Dubravka not coming out quick enough or hesitating when it comes to these situations. But he did that right. He got that right. Messi might have been a bit of a spill, but he was quickly there to make sure he got that ball back. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
Exactly. And also as well, in the first half, when Dan Burton went to head it back to him, right? I mean, De Bracker could have came forward a bit more, and he didn't. So, Burton happens to clear it over and see it out for a throw, and I think it was. Yeah. Absolutely. That tells me everything that they do not trust De Bracker at all whatsoever. No. Nick Pope would have been on like a flash. De Bracker just stood on this lane. Would you save De Bracker Burton... in the summer, John? I think I need to now. I think I need to. Yeah. You need to sell him now and go and get that um, Madashvili. Madashvili, Feely, if I pronounce his name. Go and get it. Madashvili. Madashvili. That's the one. Great. Can he goalkeeper? He's he is. He's like, a brilliant quick. keeper. He's quick and he plays the ball out from the back really well. And I'm so impressed with this keeper, by the way. Speaking of ball, speaking of playing out from the back, Spurs were doing that look. And look how we were really, really getting right at them. Exactly, exactly. They he couldn't really try to press and shut them down when they exactly. dragged it from the back. That couldn't caught with them as whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? So, you know what? We could play the back for the back well, but we absolutely nullified it. If you can nullify them playing out for the back, you go a long way because you have got pace up front as well. Let's be honest about it. Um, let's go for the comments and go for the player ratings. We have a first, if you have a first team out with a bit of quickness score, that's some Allen. And Kels Green with Tawny of four our reserves team players, Isaac, Bruno, Gordon, and Cher Barnes did quite well. And Kels Green to Gary, and Gary's having a laugh. Right, let's go for the player ratings, guys. You know what it's all about. Yeah, we go for the players and marks out of 10. And if you don't agree with our ratings, cry. We'll be back again next time. So let's go with you, Tawny. I've got to get that in. <laughs> Um, we're going to start with just been speaking about this guy. I mean, look, he made a good, he had a good save, but like Pete said, right, he liked about it. He got up quickly and um, sorted it out. But it's like communication again, Tony. It needs to be sorted out very, very quickly. Yeah, there's definitely no trust there with the defence in Dubravka. You can see it clearly. Um, you know, he hasn't got that common presence like Nick Pope's got, and and they know what Pope's all about. Um, but look, he didn't have a lot to do, to be honest, yesterday. Not a lot from Spurs, if I'm honest. Um, mm. Apart from he had that one spill, but he did get it, he make up for it. But um, look, to me, he just had a steady game yesterday. Nothing, nothing major. Um, I'll give him a seven, John, because he didn't have anything to do, really, to be fair. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, John still saying, sort of laughing, blessing. Um, also, keep I cannot do better on a clean sheet, exactly. We are defending properly, exactly. which is really, really good. Defend properly, we win the game. Let's go on to um, the back four. I'll go repeat. I'm going to give you um, Doggy. I thought he played a right back and he dealt with the doggy really, really well. I thought he did a really good job at right back. Do Murphy, yeah. He was not too bad. There was a couple of misplaced passes in the first half. I really, really thought that was a little bit oh, at times. But yeah, I thought he he did he wasn't he did pretty well um in that position. So I, I I would say a seven for Murphy as well. Yeah, sounds about right for me to be fair. Let's go on to the other side. Um, Tony, I mean, look, I mean Emma Craft, steady as a rock in the game. Unusual position for him. I mean, I like him on that game and I think he did a good job on Werner. Let's be real. I thought he had a good game. Yeah, I thought Emil Kraft played really well. Um, his centre-back. Um, yeah. We've seen him do it before. He'd done it against Man United at uh, Old Trafford in the Carabao Cup and had a great game. Um, yeah, look. Again, no frills, but he did his job. Did what he needed to do. Saw the danger, done the clearances. Unlucky with his shot when I think he hit the post. Um, very unlucky. But other than that, he did very, very well. Um, and I thought Kraft had a steady game. I'll give Kraft an eight. Okay, fair enough. And I'll increase you as well. Because he was part on. of a defence that kept a clean sheet. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's go on to um, Pete. I'm going to give, going to give you Dan Burn. I thought, again, I thought he, I suspect that's his space now. No more left backs from this guy anymore. I thought he really played really well at the back today. He did well. He won a lot of headers, I thought. He really, really got into um, the game. I thought he'd, his leadership on the pitch was really, really outstanding as well. And 
it's great to see because he has been in for Pelters a lot when he comes up against quick players. I agree. Has Eddie worked on someone within training? You never know what he might have. But yeah, I thought Dan Byrne was exceptional yesterday. I think BDB deserves a nine for me. Fair shot, fair shot. Let's go as partner in crime. I mean, E. Martin song out of the game. Of he's got a cracking header to make it 4 0 and raised some tactical fouls as well, smart ones as well, to be fair. And his passing's fantastic. And what a fantastic performance by Fabian Cher, Tony. Yeah, again, Cher, I thought was absolutely outstanding yesterday. Um, as he has been in a lot of games this season for us, you know. Um, but yeah, look, um, for everything he did yesterday, he did very well. Um, got his tackles in. You know, he made five clearances, two block shots, four interceptions, uh, two tackles. He got he got a goal as well. Um, won a couple of aerial duels. He won a few ground duels as well. Um, okay, yes, he did pull a few fouls, but again, that's part and parcel of being the centre half and the defender. Well, mm-hmm. I thought he was outstanding. So for me, Fabian Shea gets a nine. Ooh, Fantastic okay. stuff. Nine well, out of I was ten. waiting for the double figures there because I think it's yeah. the ten for me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Tony's feet this time. Well, I should have given him that. Never mind. Um, well, never, I'll mind. Give it, never mind. Let's go on to the midfield. I mean, the thing so yeah, he has one of his better games to be fair. I mean, um, he kept Madison quiet, um, cut off pass as well. I thought, I mean, look, he's gone for a hard time. And um, he was off the session earlier on the day, just area, yeah, but he got away with that one as well. I'm going to give you number 36, Pete. It was a lot better. What he did look to do in the game was pick up Madison. And I think that's what he must have been told by uh, Eddie out to do. It was a lot better because this lad has been shocking the last quite few games he's played. But it was a lot better yesterday. And very when he come out and admitted about his injury that he had about his foot, to come came back from a broken angle in four weeks mm. is a bit the thingy. But it was a lot better from long stuff yesterday. Did well to pick up Madison, as I mentioned. I think a seven for long stuff. Yeah, sounds about right for me because um he got robbed of session earlier on that. Nah. Get us marking down a bit as well. I know it's early in the game, but I thought it was a bit better. I'm not going to lie. Not my favourite player, but you know what? Eddie seems to like him. Let's go on to um, another Geordie. Um, I'm going to give you Tony Elliott Anderson. I thought he was outstanding. I'll drum this guy up to start the game, and he did not disappoint. No, I thought Elliot Anderson was pretty great. He has to, you know, he got, uh, got stuck in. Um had a shot himself. Um, I thought I thought Elliot Anderson's all round game was pretty good yesterday. Um, mm. He had an excellent game, put in one hundred and ten percent, which is what you want to see from your players. Um, I don't think Elliot Anderson put a foot wrong. If I'm honest, I thought he, as I say, I thought he played uh, really, really well yesterday, and I was pretty impressed with Anderson yesterday. Gotta remember this lad's only 21 years of age, of course, as well. So he's got a long, you know, he's got a long time before he's peak. Um, let's hope he changes his allegiance and plays for England because I think he'd be better for England than he would be for Scotland. And and that's no disrespect to Scotland, by the way. Mm. I just think he would be uh, more suited in that England midfield. So let's hope Southgate calls on him. If he plays like this, then you know he, he could be on the plane to the Euros. Um, or as Anton Dex say, there might be a place on the plane for you, Elliot Anderson. Um, you know, like I see, had a steady game yesterday. Um, had a shot on target and three off target, you know, and one blocked, which is, I think, the one from when you doggy made the um, interception. Um, you know, but again, he's only young, but he made five clearances as well. I thought he was outstanding yesterday. Uh, I'm going to give him a nine. Yeah, I think that sounds about right for me. Um, let's go on to um, the, the, the lad for Brazil and um, Bruno Gibbales, Pete. What can you say about this lad? Uh, I, I know Tony's wanted me to say it. Um, he's just magical. He's a wizard in that midfield. 
That pass he picks out for Isak has got to go down as passes of the season. Where would we be without this guy? Where would we be without Bruno in the midfield? Mm -hmm. And the good thing is, now is that the cutoff point for a two-match ban for 10 yellow cards is now officially over. Yep. Thank Lord is that because he's done incredible to get this (laughs) far when we were thinking there's a long way to go and he's already he's picked up his ninth yellow car but but he's done fantastically and his performance yesterday was just absolute top draw this lad is a wizard in midfield yes 10 out of 10 for the guy in the magic hat mr bruno gimarish big up to bruno big up to bruno man fantastic pete and um, let's go on to the front three. Um, this guy cost 45 million quid. People say, Oh, we don't want this guy. And it comes here off and on the pitch. His attitude is absolutely spot on. One goal, two assists, and he tracks back and he took the ball of Doggy as well and set kind of set the tone. His set piece is gonna be fantastic. And I'm gonna give you Anthony G. Yeah, um, outstanding again. Um you know, I, I can't really say anything bad about There's nothing to say bad about this lad because he's been outstanding all season. Um, You know, and for, I think he sort of like took his chance more when he came because when you think when Harvey Barnes started against Sheffield United and Harvey Barnes got that injury and then Gordon came on, from that game at Bramall Lane, Gordon has been, I mean, yes, he, he played him okay the first couple of games, but after that game against Sheffield United, that just seemed to spin. That just seemed to spur him on, and his seasons just got from strength to strength. And you know, um, I think he's been absolutely fantastic yesterday. Uh, you know, um, she we couldn't have gotten a, a couple of goals yesterday, but you know what? He, he got the one goal. He got the two assists, which is absolutely fantastic. Somebody who's been involved in eighteen goal contributions all season, as I said earlier on. Um, you know, uh, the guy, the guy's playing really, really well. Taking the corners, I thought he's corners. Yeah, okay, some of them weren't the best. But you know what? He's trying, and that's the main thing. That's all you can do. All you got to do is keep putting that ball in the box because one yeah. one is going to stick, and it's stuck because it's stuck on Cher's head and went in the back of the net past Vicario, who, again, I thought that keeper looked very shaky yesterday as well. He didn't look comfortable with balls underneath the crossbar. He did not like it one bit. Um, and I think that's maybe an area we've looked at and th- because I don't think Vicario has been tested that much just under his bar. And he did not like some of them corners mm-hmm. coming in. He was flapping in the wind. Um, but for me, Gordon, yeah, absolutely fantastic. And uh, for me, yes, it definitely is. It's going to be one of those. It's a 10. Hey, yeah. Yay! Man of the match. Is he man of the match or? Oh, yes, I think he God. is, John. He could be he there, Just, yes. Just, I think, yeah. I think he just pips... Uh, I think he just pips his sack because of the goal and the two oh. assists. Yeah. But I tell you what, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Yeah, I'm with you. Big up to Mama again. Um, fantastic mod as well. And um, she's absolutely right. He shut the doubters up fat. Absolute fat. And um, Do you know what wouldn't surprise me, John? Sorry. Do you know what wouldn't surprise no, me? No, but... When we go and play Crystal Palace, Bruno picks up a yellow card. <laughs> I'm waiting for I'm waiting for that. I'll go to the bookies and put some money on he's gonna get booked. And they're gonna say that's his tenth, yeah. that's his tenth. <laughs> but it's an apps. It don't matter. Exactly. Let's go on to Pete. What am I gonna give you? I'm gonna give you because you have Bruno, I'm gonna give you Harvey Barnes, man. Very well yesterday. Very, very well. Drive on the ball was really, really good. Um just got it. He didn't score. I think there was an attempt that he did. He could have looked to have possibly took a shot a little bit earlier than he did hesitate a bit. But do you know what? This guy deserves to start throughout the remainder of the season. And yeah, he's got to play now in stuff throughout the rest for the rest of the season now for me. And I'm glad hopefully he can stay injury free now throughout the remainder of the season. Um Harvey Bonds, I'm going to give an eight for Harvey Bonds. Yep, fair enough. He's creative, strong, really unlucky not to get at least one assist. And you know what? 
he goes to that pole. Not many people get past Paul, by the way, because Paul's a fantastic left, right back. And you know what? He had a mare yesterday. Yes, I hope he gets better with his hamstring as well. And uh, let's go on to, last but not least, Tony. you got Gordon. 21 goals this season from the big suite. And he made Van der Ven and Romero absolutely stupid at times. And you know what? First off, is Isak an elite striker? Also, is he world class? What a game he had yesterday. Two finishes. Yeah, I mean, look, he was absolutely tremendous yesterday again. Um, he, he seems to be getting stronger and now he's more fitter. Um, look, th this guy's got so much talent, it's unbelievable. It's scary to think how much, how better he can get. Um, and to be, fair, to be fair, he's not even near his peak yet either. So, look, once this guy gets to his peak, <laughs> no, it's just wait, the sky's the limit with this guy. But, look... Mm. He's been absolutely terrific. Even at 63 million quid, you've got to look at that and see that's now a bargain. He's just three goals behind Haaland. Can he get the golden boot this season? Why not? Why not? Um, look, as long as we keep playing the front three the way we are, then, you know, Isak could have quite a few more goals. He'd be over 20 goals this season without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and that'd be absolutely terrific to see that. And he'll join Shearer and that club of getting over 20 goals in the season for us. But look, um, yeah, I mean, he, he was absolutely fantastic yesterday. Uh, you know, unlucky not to get a hat-trick. Um, you try to get his head on one, which I think it just flew over his head. But, you know, he tried. Mm. But, you know, two goals, two shots on target, both scored. Two off target, two shots blocked. You know, yes, he missed one big chance. Maybe he could have had a hat-trick. Um but you know what? The guy's absolutely fantastic. He's played well. Um, and can he be an elite striker? Absolutely. He's got to be up there with the elite. Um, if he stays fit, if he stay, if we get a full season out of or at least get 30 games out of um, Isak in a season, then he will absolutely smash it. I mean, look, remember when he was at Sociedad, that season when he played 34 games for them, he scored 17 goals, and that's a one and two ratio. The season after, he had that injury, which wrecked his season. So we know the talent Isak's got. Um, so for me, yes, he can be elite. Yes, he can become one of the best strikers in the world as well. Um, so look, let's see. Um, you know, is it? You know, he's the, the. I know they call him in Sweden the next Latin Ibrahimovic. Um, look, Ibrahimovic was one hell of a striker and one of the best in world football. Can Isak be there? Absolutely, of course he can. Why not? For me, Alexander Isak's a 10. <laughs> big 10. And look, it's hard to... Look, man of the match, we'll look at Gordon, we'll look at Isak. You look at the two. Anthony mm -hmm. Gordon, yes, got the two. Got the two assists and the goal. Mm -hmm. Done his tracking back well. Isak did well yesterday with his two goals. But look, if I'm honest, man of the match for me... And I think it's look, it's only split by the by your hair, literally by your hair. So that's how much it's it, it's very very close. Um, but for me, I've got to give it Isak. Um, mm. You know, not to say Gordon had a bad game, just that you know, East, I mean, you could have said Bruno's ball splitting pass. What you know. Uh, was a great pass from uh, Bruno won the you know majestic world class, but yeah, it's got to be Isak. He's two goals, took them really well, ran them ragged. Uh, Van der Ven had a nightmare, and he's probably glad he won't have to face Isak again this season. So, yeah, for me, Isak just pips Gordon to man of the match, and I say only, only just you know, um. By even a particle of dust, that's all he spits them by. That's how close it really is, John. Wow, I tell you what, for me, it'd be Anthony Gordon. One goal, two assists, his work rate has been fantastic. I thought that was one of his best games I've seen in black and white shirt. But Anthony Gordon, for me, man of the match, you're saying Isak and Pete is yours. I'm gonna go with Isak as well. It was just the goal, the way he has. Uh, Van der Ven on his backside. I know Anthony Gordon kind of did the same as well. Uh, but 
it's the second the second goal he scores. The way he just runs from his own half to get that ball and do the rest. And yeah. the way he beats Van der Veen again was just incredible and just does the rest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think Isak as well learned this lesson last season as well. He's one on one against Palace, one on one, and um, he shot straight at the keeper. And I think he's learned this lesson. Good strikers do miss chances as well. And uh, he tried to do a messy dink, didn't come off. Keep asking if that this season he's been clinical. Big up to Alexander, by the way. And if you end up fifth this season, be enough for a miracle. Big up to everyone from top to bottom. Gary, you're absolutely correct. And she said 10 for Isak. Elliot was all over the pitch and absolutely class on young lad. My man and a mash. You know what? We cannot sell Elliot Anderson at any cost. That guy is Newcastle through and through. And the last one, but at least we've got to give my Joe Rietton as well. You know how it works, right? If you don't like a game, please cry. I did a count of three, count do it. A countdown to three, three, two, one. I like to go put my hand up. So it's three, two, one. I give it a ten. There you go. Give Tesla Rise a ten for um Eddie then Tony. Because look, although the time he confused us with the with the team sheet, but look, um he got <laughs> He got that team right yesterday. Um, obviously, if Livermento's fit now, nice to see him back on. Would Livermento start against Palace? Who knows? He could do. Um, and if he does, then obviously Murphy would have to drop to the bench. Um, but I just thought the front three, the front three that he picked yesterday was absolutely spot on. And as I've said, I have been critical of Eddie Howe. But, you know, it's constructive criticism. I've not shouted once, say, Eddie gets sacked or anything like that. All I've said is, look, I want to see Eddie show a bit more steel. I want to see Eddie, you know, have some balls to do something different. That's that's going to, you know, and I think that threw Spurs yesterday. And, look, last time we played a back three, yes, that was against Man City. Okay, it didn't work in the cup. But, look, I just think he got everything spot on yesterday. Gordon, Isak, Bonds combo. That has to stay for me. That has to absolutely stay. So for me, he got it right yesterday. And that's why we that's why he's getting the 10. You know, if if he got it totally wrong yesterday, I would say he had it wrong yesterday. As I say, I have been criticizing of him, but it's not because it's not being negative or anything. It's being honest, and I'm not going to sit here and face people and say, "Well, actually, you know, I'm, oh yeah, Eddie's got it wrong, or Eddie's got it right." And I'm not going to say he's got it right every game because then that that makes me look an idiot. Because then I'm not being honest with people. I'd rather be honest, and if people don't like honesty, that's fair enough. But a lot of the viewers there who've been on have known what I've been saying about them. And I just want them to get a team sheet right for once. And I think yesterday was absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. That's Pete. Yep, absolutely. Got it all, uh, got it right yesterday. Definitely. And again, in regards to the attack of three, a lot of fans would be begging for an attack and three of uh, Bonds, Golden and Isak. And I think Eddie had to go for it. And look how it massively worked. Keep that throughout the remainder of the season. And we'll yeah. get goals. We'll get goals with our with that attack and three up front. Do not bring the likes of Miggy back in straight away. The same with Wilson. Those two don't deserve to be anywhere near mm. the start lineup at the moment. I know they're out injured, but even if they do come back, they do not deserve to be anywhere that lineup. Mm. We've got to play that attack and three now throughout the remainder of the season. 100%. Oh, for it. 100%. 100%. And also for the Eddie out, out test as well. If you were all them out, my advice to you people, if you're watching the show, right? We're going to call it how it is, yeah? <laughs> Go to Caribbean and drink some rum, yeah? Don't just take the day off. Take the two weeks off, yeah? And come back and say you got it all wrong. Simple as that. And what I mean, the hell is that? <laughs> 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 I 
Do they get beat? I'm going to send it to. I'll send it to you, John. It's funny. <laughs> oh, you should share it on the screen, Tony, on here. Yeah. Did you Go see? On, did you hear? Did you hear about Jamie Redknapp yesterday? By the way, he was a bit brutal towards Casemiro. Oh yeah, should it be in the in the soccer field? He says it was like him playing soccer raid. Yeah. Nah, didn't know. I didn't see it. Oh, yeah, all, I man. heard that. I heard that. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, he says. Jamie Redknapp says he says the way Casemiro's playing, you think he's playing soccer raid. Wow! <laughs> hey, <laughs> you should share this on this. T- He's been shot. He has been shocking this season. I can't lie. I can't even lie. I think his legs are gone. One. His legs look gone. He he looks very poor, doesn't he? He doesn't look a great player anymore, does he? Uh, does anyone know that? Um, God, is it Garnacho? I believe it is. Garnacho. Yeah. yeah. The stuff that Pony Goldbridge was putting about Ten Hag, Garnacho was liking the tweets that. Goldbridge was putting on. Was he? Yep. Woo! He was liking the tweets. Goldbridge is going, wow. I tell you what, though. Do you rate that guy? Do you rate Ganacho? Does anyone rate this guy? I think he's got talent, John. He's definitely got a talent. I mean, he he scores some cracking goals. That one against Everton, that's probably up there as one of the goals of the season. I mean, look, he he probably just needs the right manager. Um, could be, could be. Yeah. Do you know what, John? Would I say yep. no to have him at Newcastle? No, I wouldn't because he's nineteen. He's got a long way to go. Um, and I think there's a raw talent there. Mm-hmm. Remember yes. what people said about Gordon. Garnacho. I think if he's got the right manager, who can bring the best out of him, I think he he they could have a hell of a player on their hands. I think he's got the talent. It's a raw delivered. talent. He's delivered. He's not a finished article yet. Not a finished article yet. Definitely not. But I tell you what, he will be one hell of a player. So, yeah. I, I think I, he's I delivered for uh... Manu this season. And this is what Goldbridge put. This is one of his tweets. Ten Hag sub- subly blaming Garnacho in the post-match press conference. Not a good look. Throwing a 19-year-old on the, under the bus who was actually delivered for you this season. But then again, he's clearly scared of upsetting the big uh, earners. And Garnacho actually liked that tweet that Mark Goldbridge put out. And as much as I, I don't, I think Mark Goldbridge can be a bit of an idiot. And mm-hmm. I usually like to disagree with what he says. I think Goldbridge has been spot on there. Yeah, I've got to kind of, I've got to, have to kind of agree. At the end of the day, right? I mean, Ten Hag's going to the press conference. He walked out of the press conference as well. He did. He walked out of the press conference as well. That's not a good look either for Enos as well. That's not a very good look at all whatsoever. I don't know what I mean. But the thing is, though, right? He's feeling the heat. Mm. I think she's saving him here that he's feeling the heat. I don't think he'll be there at the end of after the season, John. I think he's gone. I think he's gone. Um, I think he knows. I that. mean, Garnacho started twenty four out of thirty games a season. He's been in team of the week three times. He's got seven goals and three assists. Um, mm. As I say, nineteen years of age. Mm. Um, would I have him at Newcastle? Do you know what? Why not? Because he's extra strength and depth as a right winger. Well, he's a left winger actually. But do you know what? I think he's. I think he could be a terrific player. He just needs the just needs the right manager, and I don't think Ten Hag's the right manager. And I've always said this: Ten Hag is not a Premier League manager. You can do well in you can do well in Holland, yeah. But you can come back to the Premier League, and it can go totally different for you. And it's not an easy league; it's a totally different league from the Eredivisie. And uh, I think Ten Hag spent. I think he's gone. I think the end of the season he'll be gone. I would be surprised if Ten Hag's in that dugout at Man United next season. I hate to say this, I, mean, I think he's a goner. But for me, if I was a United fan, I'd give him another season for me personally. But I think Tony, I kind of agree with you. I think he's gone. I think the lad has gone. And he's they got thrown players impact. under the bus. He is thrown players. Sancho under the bus. now Ganacho, and you know what? He's not. He's scared of taking on Rashford. He's very scared. You talk about Ange being ruthless to Son. He's not ruthless to Rashford because he is scared. That tells me that he cannot handle big eagles. 
like a Rashford. Whoever comes in in the summer, Rashford has got to go. Get rid of them. We do not want bad apples at any football club. And I do not want Rashford at Newcastle United. No way. No. We'll see. Who trash that more him. like? Exactly. Because if Eddie gets him, right? I'm not I'm just wish you're thinking here. If he does, then it's gonna be on him to get the best out of Marcus. Rashford. And if he doesn't, <clears throat> and if it, that means that the bigger clubs, if you can handle a Rashford and then lose his jobs because of that, I don't think he'll get a big job. So my advice, keep away from that guy. Do the guy is over, the Rashford is completely yeah. overrated. I don't see the hype enough yeah, to be Rashford's honest. Rashford's going abroad anyway. Yeah, I believe so. And I think he's I going think to Paris Saint Germain. Could be in the summer. Could be in the summer. But you know what? He's fun and laugh, fun and out of love for United, and that's a shame because they've done a lot for him. Anyway, go for the comments. We're close to show, and uh, you're paying John. I have two weeks in Jamaica, please. Um. <laughs> If they had the money, and if they had the money, <laughs> I'm not comfortable with letting the other teams have the ball. It buys trouble. I like to see more in-game functional and formations. I agree, Gary. Take the game to them. Don't forget, you owe Clover a song, and I can't say the same in my life. <laughs> and I got uh, he's a pudding heat as an Andy. If, if also can act your man, you would be mid-table. Alan, you could be right. John is treating all channel members to us in Jamaica. <laughs> Mm. That's only big. You better stop working all the time, John. I better do, aren't I? <laughs> better do. I'll be bankrupt. Galacho's getting self kit And I, I actually read Galacho messy, like, he's not mm. quite messy. He's not quite messy. Galacho's playing in the wrong team. That's from Allen. He would say that. And the Premier League this weekend has been a bit weird with the score lines with like Villa beating Arsenal and Palace beating Liverpool. Palace and Lewis, big up to Lewis, by the way. And oh, then we Rash. PSG was Rashford. I tell you what, if I was a man, you'd say 10 or 21 pick it up. I'm quite happy driving into the airport and driving into the your tunnel to Paris. Rashford, Newcastle, go on, mate. So, uh, Gary, I don't want that guy in Newcastle. I do not want that guy. Let's make it abundantly clear. I do he not. doesn't want to be at Man United anyway. I don't nah. He's a ban, I said at the moment. No, nah, no, definitely not. I don't see the hype of him. And he's shit for England. Well, and Lewis. What did he do in the last two England games? Nothing. Well, or was, did he yeah. not come on in one of them? He did nothing. Take care, Kels, love, and I'll catch you in a bit. Um, you're right, Pete. You're absolutely right. That guy needs to be picked. He needs to be picked. Anthony Gordon. Rashford should be at mm-hmm. home. Remember what um, Borgie had said, right? He said, and he's made it clear, he picks players on form. Yeah? We'll see what happens. If Anthony Gordon doesn't get a place in Germany... Then there's got be students. I can't lie. I can't really lie. Rashford, lazy hype job. Exactly. Right, we're going to wrap up the show there, guys. It's been over an hour and a half and it's been fantastic again. And um, yeah, so um, it's good to have us on the show. Asked... I know. Go on, Tony. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, um, I said, John. Right, you look at Anthony Gordon, 18, yeah. 18 um, goal contributions a season, the 10 goals and eight assists. Okay. Compare that to Marcus Rashford, who plays in the same position as Gordon does. Mm-hmm. Marcus Rashford this season started 26 out of 31 games, has scored seven goals and got two assists. So he's only been involved in nine goal contributions, half of what Anthony Gordon's been involved with with Newcastle yeah. United. Um, and he's only created six big chances, which is half of the 12 that Anthony Gordon's created as well. Um, yeah. So again, it just shows you. And... Um, Ball recoveries per game for Rashford is very poor. It's only 2.6 compared to Gordon's 3.8. Mm. Um, you know, <laughs> the guy is just, as I say, he's not, he's not, he doesn't like tracking back. Yes, he's only had two yellow cards all season. Well, probably because he doesn't do enough tackling in the game. That's why he's only got two yellow cards because he, he, he pulls out of it. He's a bottle job. Um, but yeah, look, he's not even been team of the weekend in the Premier League this season at all. Um, he's expected XG seven goals, and he's already equaled that. That's poor for a player who's supposed to be a left winger stroke um, striker, um, and a goal scoring rate of uh, frequency of every three hundred and twenty three minutes, which is really poor compared to Gordon. So, if you look at players on form, 
and you look at the two different uh, profiles, both players, Anthony Gordon is streets ahead of Marcus Rashford, I'm afraid to say. And if people think I'm being a bit over the top seeing Anthony Gordon streets ahead of him, well, I've said this for a long time. People laughed at me, but I'll tell you what, Anthony Gordon is definitely streets ahead of uh, Marcus Rashford at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. Fat, absolute fat. And you know what? All eyes will be on the, the 23 being picked for Germany. And I hope Anthony Gordon is one of them as well. Well said, Tony. Um, right. Um, like I said, we're going to wrap up the show. And um, before we do that, I mean, Pete, um, if you can tell the few so we can find you, man. And what you got coming up soon? So, channel there, PD Prolock. Um, with this being oh, with us having a 10 day break now, um, the only schedule is the Crazy PD's Football Live Show. But I'm going to look to do something now. What we did, um, the top five worst seasons when it was the international break. So, I was hoping if you could join me and we could do our top five best Newcastle seasons at some point. Um, I'll just see when you're on available and if you would like to join me for this one as well like we did for the previous one yeah i'll be up for it i mean yeah. what day was it gonna be um i haven't decided yet i'll just uh i'll have to check when you are available first so but i think it would be really good to do since um we done a one on five worst seasons and we may as well do one of our top uh, our top five best seasons this time so well Fantastic. And of course, Creedy's PD's football live show will be back uh, next Friday. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. And that's his Pete's channel. Thank you, Mama. Um, there you go. Peter Proudlock is his channel name as well. Thank you guys you so much. And um, Tony, where can we find you, man? And what you got coming up this week? Yeah, so you can find me on It's All Black and My TV. It's behind me on the screen behind me. Um, back of the studio um yeah so you can find me on there um i've done a pre-match yesterday so if you haven't seen that go on out and check it out and have a look um if you're new to the channel give it a subscribe and a like that'd be fantastic um tomorrow night i'm probably going to be doing the match review um because i just haven't had time this weekend uh so i'll do the match review tomorrow night um and then not sure what else is coming up this week on the channel um so yeah um so just keep an eye out um i'll probably do something during the week anyway um yeah it's weird we haven't got any matches next weekend because it's fa cup semi-final we would have been playing man you if we hadn't if we had been if they hadn't got through to the semi-finals but you know that through um come on coventry city come on coventry knock them out um (laughs) you know mark robbins do one against your old club, mate. Do it. You know, mm. he was the super sub for them. Now let's see him be the super manager for Coventry and overturn Man United. That would be fantastic if that happens. Um, but yeah, look, it's strange. We haven't got a game till next Tuesday or Wednesday, isn't it? It's, Wednesday. Uh, you know, Palace. And it's not even televised either. So it's not. And again, it's a long journey for people down at uh, probably the furthest London club to travel down on a Wednesday night and on a yeah, Wednesday as they're well. They're doing it again, 8 o'clock kickoff. It's ridiculous. The same with Man United. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff as well. But I tell you Can't what, go to it. the Man U game, Neither can I. that could be a shootout for the European place. And I'll tell you what, I hope we go to Old Trafford and absolutely stuff them. I really do, because I really want us to go there and stuff them. Like we did in the Carabao Cup. Um, Let's put a few past on, because I don't need him. Um, he's a poor keeper, in my opinion. Um, yeah, let's go down there. Let's go and stuff Man United. Let's go and get a, a Premier League win at Old Trafford, and um, let's pit them. And do you know what I'd love if Man United even finished outside the European places and didn't get Europe this season. You know, uh, that would make that would that would just be telling. That would be him gone at the end of the season without a shadow of a doubt. Ten Hag, mm. but uh, look. All I, all I care about is Newcastle, and all I want to see is us go down there and give them a smashing. And if we go down there, if we play like we did against Spurs, we could run right against Man United, um, especially if Casemiro just stands in the middle of the park, just wandering yeah. about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so look, yeah, 
Um, it, as I say, it, it's wrong for the fans having to do these trips at 8 o'clock at night. It's wrong. It really is wrong. Um, but the Premier League, do they care? No. And why is the game at Selhurst Park kicking off at 8 o'clock? Why can't it kick off at, say, half 7 or something like that? At least the fans then can be out the ground by, like, quarter past, half past 9. And, you know, it, it, it's stupid. It should have been an earlier kickoff. If it's not televised, start it earlier. I'll with you all the way, man. I'll with you all the way. I think it's disgrace. They don't care about us at all whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? They know we turn up. It's as simple as that. But one day, we are mm. going to have our day. It's going to be a protest. And also as well, we're going to have our day. Simple as that. Next season, they need to fix up real quick. Otherwise, Newcastle fans can say, right, you know what? I ain't going. Simple as that. Anyway, so, um, yeah. So, we find you on this all Black and White TV. We can find Pete's pd Farlock channel as well and um you can find me on john sinclair tv of course i hope to be back to do the press conference and uh, not the press conference um the the podcast show you're gonna be available tomorrow guys or yeah yeah i think it should be okay happy, eight, happy do at eight o'clock yeah absolutely john tony happy eight o'clock or you got darts um no, i was going to do a match review tomorrow night john but um, oh I'll see cool. I can do it oh, no, but what are you doing it though? I don't want to clash, man. Well, it was going to be eight, but if you're doing a show tomorrow, John, I'll what I'll do is I, I may even just do a pre-record and stick it out there. To be fair, if you're going to do a live show, Tony, don't don't just because I'm doing a podcast show, don't let me um, say, oh no, because he's doing a live show, like you know what I mean. But if you could do that, what I'm going to try and do is um, a cord try and put that back to Tuesday then faster kiss I'll do the podcast show on Tuesday if you want you just to your review on Monday I'm happy uh, if you I'm, I'm Pete... available Tuesday are you available Tuesday Pete yeah Tuesday I think yeah Tuesday you'll be fine yeah I'll tell you I'll do the podcast on the show on Tuesday and then we'll be sure John yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you do a review on them yeah, tomorrow yeah. like you know I'll be happy with that so that's no problems at all so so Tony's got a show tomorrow, the review show at eight o'clock, and I'll do my the real talk podcast show on Tuesday, which should be at the same time at eight o'clock on Tuesday night. So we could well be talking about Kieran Trippy as well, because there's some um, reports um, from Football Insider that um, they set to offer him a new contract at the end of the season. So keep your eyes peeled for that one as well. So guys, if you like the video, like what you watch. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you um, subscribe to Pete's and Taunts as well. You know what their channel names as well. And the backtrack on luxury taxes against us on Tuesday. We're going to chat about it again on Tuesday, latest on that as well. And as always, thanks for Mama Floss. It's a mod. Thanks for the chat as well. And as always, have a fantastic evening. 